Namaste, yogis. We will begin with our opening chant. Please bring your hands in prayer position. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bonaktu Sahaviyam Karavavahai Tejasvina Vadi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Today's topic is Swadhyaya, one of the five niyamas or observances of yoga. Swadhyaya is a compound Sanskrit word. The first part, swa, means one's own or self. The second part can be interpreted in two ways. One is as adhyaya, which means lesson, lecture, or reading. And the second is dhyaya, which means to contemplate, reflect, or meditate. So swadhyaya literally means to study oneself or to contemplate on oneself. Swadhyaya is often translated as self-study and is usually used in the context of studying scriptures or wisdom texts. Let's take a look at what the Yoga Sutras has to say about Swadhyaya. From self-study and reflection on sacred words, one attains contact, communion, or concert with that underlying natural reality or force. In the last talk, we discussed tapas, which usually refers more to practices on the physical level. Swadhyaya is more on the level of the mind. It is about reading, attending lectures, and in today's world, listening to recorded talks about spiritual subjects in order to discover one's true nature. There have been saints and sages throughout human history who made incredible efforts to attain a high level of self-mastery. They transmitted their teachings orally or in writing as a gift to future generations. It is because of them that I am able to carry the torch of an unbroken tradition and share these teachings with you today. Jai Guru! Our goal as yogis is Kaivalya, or becoming liberated from world suffering and the cycle of rebirth. In order to achieve this, we must first know what to do. We can learn the slow way by trial and error, or to speed up the process, we can learn from those who walk the path before us. It is like acquiring any other skill in life. If you are an aspiring doctor, you first study theory in school and then go out in the real world to put your knowledge into practice. If you are an aspiring chef, you learn about foods and cooking techniques and different equipment first then you go out and experiment with that knowledge. The spiritual journey also involves gaining theoretical knowledge first and then putting it to practice. As with mastering any other skill, having a mentor can be very helpful. For spiritual seekers, this is where a major pitfall lies. I will playfully call the phenomenon being mentored by a parrot. Parrots can mimic human words with such accuracy that they may seem like they are actually speaking and understanding the meaning of what they are saying. Parrots can be trained to enunciate words of wisdom. It may say things like, silence is a source of great strength, or the root of suffering is attachment or the unexamined life is not worth living. Someone hearing this may say, wow, that is a wise parrot. But all the parrot has done is to memorize a series of sounds without understanding their meaning. Likewise, 
There are countless self-proclaimed gurus out there who manage to memorize teachings and who teach others without having made efforts to follow the teachings themselves. And average persons, like being impressed by the wisdom of the parrot, are often mesmerized by such gurus. The guru may also be convinced that he has already attained enlightenment. He will end up a self-serving, power-hungry, short-tempered, arrogant fool, and perhaps even more unenlightened than the students he teaches. You know who I am talking about. Do not go there. That is not Swadhyaya. It is not enough to read or memorize wisdom teachings. They must be applied in our daily life. That is the work. Swadhyaya is about self-inquiry. It is about observing our own behavior, realizing the errors in our ways, and then making efforts to correct them. It is to study sacred texts and follow the advice with sincerity so that you may one day become saintly yourself. There is an excellent expression to walk the talk. Being able to recite hundreds of recipes does not make someone a great chef. Likewise, being able to recite hundreds of sacred passages does not make someone a spiritual master. Unless the teachings are put into practice, they are as good as words spoken by a parent. Now there was nothing wrong with listening to lectures of an unenlightened person, just as there is nothing wrong with listening to scriptures recited by a parent. We can learn from all sources. We just must be careful not to rely on someone to lead us to enlightenment and allow ourselves to be brainwashed in the process. I make this point on behalf of all the sincere seekers who were led on the wrong path and suffered the consequences. Kaivalya is a solitary path. Nobody can do the work for us. We must do the work ourselves. It is a long-term practice that requires devotion, courage, and sincerity. That is Swadhyaya. Sometimes we will make mistakes. Sometimes we will be frustrated with ourselves, but we will learn from those mistakes to become a better person. It is much like polishing a stone. The more you polish yourself, the more brilliantly you will shine. Some people ask if a guru is necessary to attain enlightenment. My answer is that it depends on the person. There is a universal law that states that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So if one appears, great. If not, perhaps you are meant to walk the path alone, at least for the moment. There is no need to travel the world searching for one. You can, but you may be wasting your time. If none appears, no worries. The answers are within you rather than outside of you anyway, so that is where you must seek. So how can you tell if a teacher you meet is really wise or is parroting the wise? Being able to see through the smoke screen of falsehoods is a capacity called viveka in Sanskrit or discrimination in English. And that, my friends, is a talk for another day. So now let's stand up and do our physical practice. Let's start with an easy stretch. Stand with your feet slightly apart, interlace your fingers, and with your inhale, take your palms up to the sky, looking upwards. Your eyes can be open or closed. For a little extra challenge, you can raise your heels off of the mat 
or if that's too difficult, just keep them on the mat. We'll hold it here for a few breaths. Take a deep inhale and with your exhale, bend to your right. Pulling back on the left shoulder, continue to look upwards and feel a nice stretch to the left side of your body. With your inhale, return to the center, and with your exhale, bend to the left side. Pulling back on your right shoulder, looking upwards and feeling a nice stretch to the right side of your body. This is a nice stretch to do first thing when you get up in the morning. It elongates the spine and gets the blood circulation going. With your inhale, come back to the center. With your exhale, slowly bring your arms back to your side and take a break. Next, let's get the circulation going in the knees. Place your hands on your knees. With your exhale, bend your knees. With your inhale, come back up. Exhale, bend down. Inhale, straighten your knees. Do this at your own pace. We'll aim for 10, but if you have knee issues or 10 is too much, just do as many as you can. If you cannot bend all the way down, just bend down halfway. Exhale as you go down, inhale as you come up. Exhale as you go down, inhale as you come up. Good. Stand back up and relax. Now that we warmed up the knees, let's warm up the hip joint. Feet apart, hands on your waist, and make big circles with your hips. We'll do 10 in each direction. Make sure to go forward too and not just to the back and sides. It's almost like a dancing movement. Try it with your eyes closed if you can. When you finish, relax. Let's do another warm-up exercise. Stand with your feet wide apart, toes pointing outwards. Bend your knees and bring your hands in prayer position. With your inhale, reach up with your arms, extend your knees. Exhale, bend your knees and bring your hands back in a circle in front of the chest. Inhale up, exhale down. Repeat this movement about 10 times. Again, if you have knee issues, you don't have to go down too far. Or if you really feel like challenging yourself, you can bend your knees even deeper. When you finish, release the pose. Next is Uttita Paramuktasana or Standing Wind Relieving Pose. If you need support, move to a wall and hang on with one hand or have your back against the wall. We'll start with the right side. When you're ready, hug in your right knee with one hand or both hands. Try to keep your back straight as you hold the pose. Besides working on the balance, this pose relieves internal gas stretches the lower back and improves circulation in the legs. If needed, you can lower your right foot to the floor in between and we'll go straight into the next pose. Uttita Hasta Padangustasana. Hold your right knee with your right hand and swing out your right knee to the right side. 
or grab the big toe of your right foot with your right inner three fingers and try to extend your right knee outwards. If you're more flexible, you may be able to extend the right knee out fully. For a little extra challenge, you can turn your head to the left. I am demonstrating several versions, so pick the one that works best for you. Let's bring the right knee back to the center, hold it with both hands, regain your balance, and then release. Good job. Now we'll switch sides. When you're ready, bend your left knee and hold it with one hand or both hands. Straighten your back and relax. If you would like more intensity, use both hands to pull your left knee tighter into the body and put pressure against your stomach. You can lower your left foot to the floor in between if needed. Or you can swing your left knee directly out to the left side using your left hand, placing your right hand on your waist, grabbing your left big toe with your left inner three fingers, keeping the knee bent or partially extended or fully extended. For a little extra challenge, you can turn your head to the right side. This is another balance pose that strengthens the leg muscles, opens the hips, and increases mental focus. Bend your left knee, bring the knee back to the center, hold it with both hands, regain your balance, and then release. Great job! Next we'll do a back bend followed by a forward bend with the hands interlaced behind the back. The first is Uttita Shalavasana. Stand with your feet slightly apart, with your inhale let your head fall back, and relax. Eyes can be opened or closed. If you get dizzy or lightheaded, come back at any time. This pose strengthens the back and abdominal muscles, opens the chest, and improves balance and posture. With your inhale, slowly come up, and with your exhale, fold forward into the next pose, Dvikonasana, or double angle pose. You can have a little bend in your knees if you need to. And if it's too hard to raise your arms above your head, just keep them resting on your back. This pose strengthens the shoulders, wrists, and fingers, tones the upper arms, burns belly fat, and relieves back pain. With your inhale, slowly come back up. And with your exhale, release. Take a break. Next, we'll do a stretch to relieve neck and shoulder pain. With your inhale, raise your right arm as high as you can reach, turn your head to the right, and take your left hand behind your back. Breathe deeply as you hold the pose. You can also do this pose with the front side of your right arm against the wall. For a little extra challenge, try closing your eyes. Inhale, and with your exhale, release. Now we'll switch sides. When you're ready, take your left arm up to the sky, your right arm behind your back, turn your head to the left, and relax. Try to breathe as smoothly as possible as you hold the pose. I'm not sure if anyone named this pose. I like to teach it because it offers a nice neck and shoulder stretch. We can call it flamenco pose or flamencasana in Sanskrit. What do you think? Inhale and with your exhale, release the pose. Come back to the center and come into a squat. The next pose is called Ardha Malasana or half squat pose. I will start by demonstrating the more difficult version. In this version, we extend the right leg out with the heel on the mat and bring the hands in Namaste. To get into the pose, you can have your hands on the mat to assist, or for an extra challenge, try it without placing your hands on the mat. Some of you may be able to place the left heel on the mat, and that is good, or otherwise keep your left heel up. 
For those of you with knee issues or who cannot bend that far, you can be in a more upright position. Bring your hands in Namaste, point the right toes up, and relax. This pose improves balance, strengthens the legs and ankles, and helps open the hips and groin. Now come back to the center however you may wish and we'll switch legs. Extend your left leg out to the side with the heel side on the mat and toes pointing upwards. Then bring your hands in Namaste and hold the pose. Once you get the pose stabilized, then try to focus on your breath. Inhale, and with your exhale, release the pose. Next is Malasana, also known as Yogic Squat or Garland Pose. Again, if a full squat is not available to you, you can be in a more upright position. And for those of you who are ready for an extra challenge, you can bring your heels together. This pose has similar benefits to the half squat in that it improves balance, strengthens the legs and ankles, and brings flexibility to the hips and groin areas. For those of you who would like a little more intensity, you can push outwards with your elbows while pulling in with your knees, using the resistance to build strength in your arms and legs at the same time. Inhale, and with your exhale, release the pose, lowering your hips onto the mat and coming into Sukhasana or any comfortable seated position. Next, we will do a neck exercise. With your inhale, let your head fall back, pointing your chin up to the sky and breathing deeply as you hold the pose. Since the neck and shoulders are connected, neck stretches are a good way to relieve shoulder pain. Inhale, and with your exhale, come back to the center. Inhale, and with your exhale, pull your chin towards your chest, stretching out the back side of the neck. Inhale and exhale, return to the center. Next are head tilts, starting with the right side. Inhale and exhale, bring your right ear towards your right shoulder, keeping the left shoulder relaxed. For a little more intensity, you can place your right hand on the head and gently press downwards. Relax and take a few deep breaths. Inhale and exhale, release. Now we'll switch sides. Inhale and with your exhale, tilt your head to the left, bringing the left ear towards the left shoulder, keeping the right shoulder relaxed. For an extra stretch, you can place your left hand on the head and gently press downwards. Relax and enjoy the stretch. Inhale and exhale, release the pose. You can move your neck around a little bit. Next is Parvurita Sukhasana or Seated Twist Pose. Place your right hand behind your back, left hand on top of or to the outside of your right knee. Inhale, stretch your spine upwards and exhale, twist to the right. Breathe smoothly as you hold the pose. This pose improves spinal flexibility and posture stretches the neck, chest, shoulders, and back, opens the hips, and relieves neck and back pain.
inhale and with your exhale return to the center now we'll switch sides take your left hand behind your back right hand on top of it to the outside of your left knee inhale stretch your spine and exhale twist to the left try to continue extending upwards with your spine as you hold the twist breathe smoothly and relax inhale and with your exhale return to the center next are shoulder stretches take your right arm up with your palm facing back bend the elbow use your left hand to press your right elbow back and hold With your exhale, slowly release the pose and we'll switch sides. When you're ready, take your left arm up, palm facing back, bend the elbow and use your right hand to press your left elbow back and hold. With your exhale, slowly release the pose, shake it out if you like, and then lie on your stomach. The next pose is Bhujangasana or Cobra Pose. Bring your feet close together and place your hands on the mat at about chest level. When ready, exhale and press into the mat with both hands and look straight ahead, raising the upper body off of the mat. Elbows can be extended but not locked. For additional benefits, squeeze your thigh and buttock muscles. This pose strengthens the spine, intercostal muscles and arms, tones the buttocks and thighs, opens the chest and improves posture and digestion. With your exhale, release the pose. And we'll go into child's pose or balasana to stretch out the back. Release and come into table pose. Next is plank pose followed by one-legged plank pose. Or you can come to your elbows and do elbow plank followed by one-legged elbow planks. Choose the version you like and we'll do it together. With your hands or elbows on the mat, come into a plank position. Keeping the body in as straight of a line as possible. First we will hold it in this position. Glance down towards the mat and try to keep your neck relaxed. If it becomes too difficult, you can lower your knees to the mat at any time. This series of poses helps strengthen the arms, shoulders, and core muscles and help reduce belly fat. Release and take a short break in child's pose. Next is Ikapada Falakasana or one-legged plank pose. You can also make this into an elbow plank if you prefer. When you're ready, come into full plank or elbow plank and raise your right leg up without shifting your hips. If there's any shaking going on, that's a good thing. That means you're really working the muscles. Inhale, and with your exhale, lower your right leg to the mat, and we'll take a little break in child's pose. If you feel any wrist strain, you can move your wrists in half circles. 
Now let's come back up to table pose to do the other side. With your hands or elbows on the mat, raise your knees and come into plank pose. Then raise your left leg off of the mat. Breathe deeply and try to relax. Inhale and exhale release come into child's pose nice job Let's come to any comfortable seated position Let's release the pressure in the wrists by making circles with the fists or shaking out the hands Next, we'll work on the obliques, also known as love handles. We will do a modified version of a pose called Vachistasana, or side plank pose. Lie on your mat on one side, facing me. You can do this pose with your legs extended for an extra challenge, or keep your knees bent. Your arm on a mat will be used to support your body weight as you lift your hips. If this is too difficult, keep your upper hand on the mat and use it for support. Or you can place the hand on the hips, or you can raise your upper arm towards the sky. Try to look upwards if you can, and maybe even close your eyes. In addition to toning the obliques and the core muscles in general, this pose strengthens the arms, shoulders, and spine, and helps improve balance. In full Vashistasana, the bottom arm is extended with the palm on the mat. With your exhale, release the hips back to the mat. We'll do the second side. You can either roll over to face the other direction or flip over to face me. Again, your legs can be extended or knees bent and your bottom arm will support your weight. When you feel ready, lift your hips and take your upper arm wherever you like. Inhale and with your exhale, lower your hips and come to a comfortable seated position. We will do another set of side planks, adding a little movement this time. Lie down on your side one more time and let's bend the knees. Again, we will support the body weight with the arm that is on the mat. With the inhale, lift the hips, swing the upper arm up and look up. Exhale, lower the hips and bring the arm down. Inhale, go up and exhale lower. Let's try for 12 of these movements. If you feel like increasing the intensity, you can always do this pose with the bottom arm and or both legs extended. And one more. When you finish, slowly push yourself up to a seated position. Great job. Now let's face the other direction and repeat the movement to the other side. Adjust your position so that you're comfortable. With your inhale, raise the upper arm and the hips, look up. And exhale, come down. Inhale, go up. Exhale, come down. And again, we'll repeat for about 12 times. You should be feeling it in your waistline by now. With regular practice, you may be able to increase the count to 15 or more reps and maybe even do two sets. And 
find one more. Now let's come into supine pose for Aruda Pavan Muktasan or half wind relieving pose. We'll start by hugging the right knee into the body using both arms. Your left leg may remain on the mat extended or for a little abdominal exercise you can raise the left leg off of the mat. You may also raise your head off of the mat to work your shoulders and upper back. This pose opens the hips, stretches the lower back, stimulates the internal organs and relieves gas. With your exhale, release the pose. We'll go straight into the next pose, Supta Machendrasana. Take your left hand to the outside of the right knee and lower the right knee to the left side of the mat, turning your head to the right. Your right arm can be extended out to the side, or if you're more flexible, you can bend your left knee and grab your left foot with your right hand. This pose improves alignment and flexibility of the spine, stretches the glutes, chest, and obliques, massages the internal organs, and stimulates digestion. It is a nice pose to do at the end of your practice. With your exhale, return to the center. Let's hug in the knees and rock from side to side, massaging out the back before doing the other side. When you're ready, hug in your left knee with both hands. You can stay in that position or you can raise your right leg and or head for a little extra challenge. Try to make your breath as smooth as possible Relaxing into the pose. With your exhale, release, and we'll go into the side twist. Take your right hand to the outside of the left knee and lower the left knee to the right side of the mat. Your left arm may be extended on the mat, or you can bend your right knee and grab your right foot with your left hand. Turn your head towards the left. Observe the beautiful curve in your spine. Inhale and exhale, release. Once again, we'll hug in the knees and rock from side to side, massaging out the back. Let's make some knee circles to release any pressure in the back. With your hands on your knees and the knees together, make 10 slow big circles in each direction. Good. Now we will do some ankle circles. We'll start with the right side. Bring your right ankle on your left thigh and make 10 big slow circles with your right foot in each direction. This exercise is not only for the ankle, it is also good for the knee and is often used in knee therapy. When you finish, do 10 point and flex movements.
When you finish, we'll switch sides. Bring the left ankle on the right thigh and repeat the same movements to your left side. For those who suffer from arthritis, you may consider making these ankle circles as well as neck circles, wrist circles, shoulder circles, etc. as part of your daily morning routine. They only take a few minutes and will keep your joints in better health. Exhale, release. Next is Supta Baddha Konasana or Bound Angle Pose. We will do a version with the hands holding the feet. If you cannot reach your feet, grab anywhere along the leg or even use a strap. If you are more flexible, you might even be able to hug your knees into the body. Pick a version that works for you today. There is also a version where you keep the feet on the floor with your knees spread apart. This pose stimulates the abdominal organs, releases tension, stretches the groin and inner thigh muscles, and helps with digestion. With your exhale, release the pose. Again, we'll hug in the knees and rock from side to side, massaging out the back. Now roll on to one side and use your hands to push you up into a seated position. Next is Pranayama. With the hot season approaching, we will do a couple of breathing exercises that help cool down the body. They are called Shitali Pranayama and Sitkari Pranayama. Try these breaths on a hot day and it is almost as refreshing as eating ice cream or having a cold beverage. They help lower body temperature. So they're also helpful if you have hot flashes or after exercising, for example. They also cool the mind and help control anger. Anytime you're driving on the freeway and someone cuts you off, or your child, friend, or coworker does something foolish, do a few shitalis to help calm your mind. These breaths quench feelings of hunger and thirst. So when you are hungry and thirsty and do not have access to food or beverages, they can help tie you over to your next meal or drink. They also help lower blood pressure. If your blood pressure is already low, be careful not to overdo it. If you feel dizzy or lightheaded, Discontinue the practice at any time. Also, avoid these breaths if you have a cold, cough, or any kind of throat irritation. We will start with shitali. Shitali means cooling or calming. So sit in any comfortable position. Hands on your knees. We'll use the mudra, a jnana mudra, and have the palms facing up three fingers, outer fingers out, and we'll do it with our eyes closed. We'll inhale from the mouth and exhale from the nose. With our inhale, we're going to roll the tongue into a tube and suck in air from that tube. And with our exhale, we'll close our mouth and release the air from the nostrils. We'll do this for about a minute. So when you're ready, begin the practice.
Let's do one more and end the practice. And next, we'll do the practice called Sitkari. Sitkari means to sip. This one we do through our teeth. A little warning is if you have any um, dental sensitivity, this can cause um, some pain, so be warned. If you have some dental sensitivity, you might want to stick with shitari, the one we did first. So this one, same position, we will kind of like you're smiling. Spread your uh, lips out to the side, do a cheese image, suck the air in between your teeth on your inhale. Close your mouth and exhale through the nostrils. Again, we'll do about one minute of this practice. When you're ready, begin. Let's do one more and end the practice. So keep your eyes closed for a few seconds. Observe the difference that that breath made in your body. And release, you can open your eyes. Now we will prepare for a final relaxation. As usual, you can pause the video, lie on the mat, face up, relax as long as you like with your eyes closed. When you feel ready, you can restart the video and we will do our final closing chant together. Please sit in a comfortable position and bring your hands in Namaste. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Badrani Pashantu Makaschitukha Bhagbhavet Om Shanti 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 Rub your hands together to generate some heat. Then give yourself a nice massage around the face, neck, and shoulders. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.